Hey everyone, welcome back and thank you for all the love once again in these last videos. Um, like I said, I got caught up in life and it's good to be back and today we have something very special here. Uh, this is the 1995, I believe, let's see. Yes, 1995. Um... Rebel Armored Snow Speeder, or excuse me, Electronic Rebel Snow Speeder. Uh, this was the last Snow Speeder to be released with electronic sounds, and that has been 23 years ago already. It'll be 25 years before you know it, and this line will be vintage. I had this as a kid. I got this for Christmas either 96 or 97. Christmas of 1996 and 97. Uh, this was one of my favorite choice as a toys as a child. Um, I remember losing one of the laser cannons and my father having to go to Home Depot to get two to make up for it. So this was a very loved toy and I remember having knots and all of my harpoon string that it comes with here. Uh, so we got this because uh, I'm not planning to collect any of these Disney um side films um it's just too much and i'm not really as interested as in the skywalker canon so i will have everything unopened from seven eight and nine uh stuff from one through six will be opened including shadows of the empire so that's kind of like my in-between story that i'm very interested in out of all of them so uh here we have is the Rebel Snow Speeder, and the reason I picked this up is I have the vintage Kenner one from 1980, and I'm like, you know what, I should have two, uh, because you know what, this is not really going to take up that much space, and it's important to have, and these are starting to go up in value, and this is something to me in Star Wars toy history where we never got electronics Rebel Snow Speeder again after this. Um, and this was in the heyday and final days of Kenner Toys. Um, and we'll take a look at the back. I got a pretty good deal on this. I bought this a year ago. Uh, so, uh, let's see on the back here. Uh, so this is from Power of the Force 2, 1995. This is, uh, very popular. This is what resurrected Star Wars Toys again. It's just got that classic Kenner quality in it has all the flaps tape has fallen off at the other end uh and i believe i only paid i'm trying to find that price sticker for you guys yes here it is only 15 bucks at a toy show uh in my area these on ebay go for more than i think 50 bucks i think you're lucky to see one for 25 dollars as a starting bid so um since I'm not going to edit this all together, and since I have a lot of content, uh, these are going to be uh, a few more videos where it's just kind of, you know, makeshift, no editing, no editing software, because I really owe you guys a lot of video and a lot of content. Uh, but after that, we will be going back to putting titles over this and whatnot, but we're not going to do it for this video, um, because once again, I'm very excited to have this, and I'm excited to just pump as much content uh, out for you guys in place of lost time and then afterwards you'll see my videos be a little bit more professional but uh, let's unbox this because we've only at the four minutes mark believe it or not so bear with me okay and I'm gonna talk um, this is really awesome I'm very excited to have this in my collection again um, and put this together for you guys and you know do usual side-by-side -side comparison with the 1980 version so uh once again they did keep something original here which i really like um they kept the carton the same i believe like the 1980 original uh here's all the instructions and cannons in the baggie uh, here's an original Kenner catalog for the time Batman was just really hot in the 90s. Oh, whoops. Sorry, I did that for you guys sideways. Sorry about that. Um, here's Star Wars. 
You could really tell they were boosting up for the special editions around this time. Lost World, you guys know I have this. B Stores was big. Starting Lineup was big. All of this stuff was big. You know, the 90s really had, in my opinion, the last um, good selection of toys. I mean, Nerf, I mean, it doesn't get any more classic than this. We all had this. I mean, I remember this. This was a big deal, the crash pack. Um, but guys, this is just overall awesome. Um, let's see what else this comes with. Bear with me again. I gotta be gentle with this because I'm trying to see if the original stickers are okay. So, and they are. If you look at that, they are okay. Okay, this is the most important part is the original stickers. Um, so these actually sometimes go more than the toys uh, because a lot of people either threw this away or they got water damaged or they've been applied on the toy like anything else from this time period and before. Um, and yeah, so without this, this was is a big deal and uh, it's good to have today. Oh, this is really cool. You know this is fresh mint out of the box. It has one of these. So you know this wasn't tempered with a poster that was really big. Uh, I remember they didn't do this for all the Power of the Force toys, but this was very, very big. And they kept the, the Kenner-styled instructions very um, authentic at this point in time. They didn't really go Hasbro onto it, you know, and I could tell because of the, the hand-drawn... Uh, instructions and assembly and just the overall font which is very similar to the vintage Kenner one uh, and uh, we have one more thing we're at the seven minute mark which is good so let me gently put all of this to the side for you guys and uh, we have the grand finale part oh man I can't believe some of this plastic has yellowed it's crazy because I remember when this came out but it's expected it's almost 25 years old here's a snow speeder and with the power of the force 2 their goal was to be a little bit more film accurate and faithful um, and here's the bottom of it we'll, we'll, we'll flip that around for you guys this is really cool uh, this is one of my favorite parts. So very faithful to the Kenner vintage one, as you will see later on in another video. But um, let's just put this in here. Let's see. So the data stamp here is 1996. As you all could, could see here. But we're going to go with 1995. The canopy is a diff same as the vintage one. And that is it. Um, and uh, I don't want to show you any more because I don't want to spoil it. But we're almost at the 10 minute mark. So we're going to show you what we're going to do here. Uh, my good friend Zach Paris from Australia, who I've given a lot of business to by this point. Uh, he literally has saved me hundreds of dollars in vintage toys. Uh, with not having to put on original decals or saving them. And uh, here is his die cut stickers that we're gonna put on. And uh, yeah, we're definitely not putting on the vintage ones. Like I said, the original stickers that go with this, you know, are probably worth about 20 or 30 bucks, maybe 15 as the lowest, but um, and uh, I love how they kept the vintage Power of the Force logo here. And uh, he has instructions too, which are photograph instructions, which I'm probably going to follow instead of the original instructions that came here since it's a graphic diagram. So we're almost at the 10 minute mark, guys. Um, part two, we're going to have this thing all assembled with light sounds. Uh, you know, and some figures in it. And then we'll do a part three with both of these ships side by side to really kind of give the um, the gap of time 
when this came out. This was 15 years later at the time. Uh, so we will show how much it had improved 15 years later. In my opinion, this was the best snow speeder made to this date uh, for, you know, modern collecting, which is now, this is almost vintage, but uh, it's still modern. But uh, we'll get back to you. We'll see you in part two. And thank you for watching.